we are going to talk about something called a bubble diagram. So it's a little bit mysterious and it's been done in English, in French, and I, I think in Japanese as well. That's right. It was done in Japanese in the early 1990s by Fusako Elad. And, uh, and then it's been done now for English and French just very recently uh, in, in uh, July, in fact. So it's really quite new. And I think it's a, a very good addition to all the different things we have for the silent way. That's exactly it. And when we see it, it's so beautiful. But from someone who doesn't know much about the silent way, it's also uh, can be overwhelming. Beautiful and overwhelming at the same time. So this is a short video to explain a little bit how it works, why we use it. So maybe you could start with the why. So I have a sentence here which illustrates what I'm, what the uh, bubble diagram is about. So here we have a sentence: "Plumb the pleatful quotations, ruggle the Polanians unglaciably in the writ." And what's interesting about this sentence is that we know a lot in actual fact. We know that the verb is ruggle. We don't know what ruggle means, but we know that it, the verb is ruggle. We know that it was the Cretaceans who rub, ruggled the Polanians and not the other way around. We know how it was done. It was done unglaciably. We know where it was done in the writ. And we know when, because we have this ed ending. So that tells us that, that it's a past. And this probably is the adverb, which says something like yesterday or today or tomorrow. Right. And so and this sentence is definitely in English. And let me show you this one. Tarek les crotations altiennes ont réglé les Polaniens ingrésablement dans le riez. And we know this is in French because we have all the words in it, like les crotations. We don't know what crotation is. It doesn't exist in French. Altienne, we know, is going to be the adjective, and it must be something like pleatful. And then orrugli, that doesn't exist in French either. But we know it's the verb because we have ONT here and we have the E acute here. Now, what these sentences are showing us is the difference between uh, functional vocabulary and lexical vocabulary. All the words in these sentences, that you, in these two sentences that you don't know, belong to uh, lexical vocabulary. So quotations is lexical, the verb ruggle is lexical, Polanians is lexical, glish is lexical, lexical, and then the rest is the uh, vocabulary of the is the functional vocabulary. We should say in fact rather than almost functional vocabulary, it's the words and parts of the sentence that actually have a function. So the S here has the function of the plural and the ED tells us that this verb is in the past. The functional vocabulary, in fact, creates the links uh, between the words. So the lexical vocabulary will tell us what a speaker has in mind. And then the functional vocabulary will tell us how the speaker wants to uh, put all these words together. Mm -hmm. And this gives us the uh, temporal relationships, the uh, personal relationships, um, the causal relationships uh, between all these things. And that is what we're talking about. Now, Gatenio's idea for the silent way was what we have to teach, since this is the heart of the language, what we have to teach are the functions in the language. And then, uh, then you can add the vocabulary that you need. After all, you might need uh, lawn and plants if you're going to go into uh, horticulture, or you might need something like, uh, I don't know, uh, financial vocabulary. You can choose the vocabulary that you want that is important for you. And so this is what this is all about. Now, I'd like to show you some st statistics. So here we have somebody called James Pennybaker, who wrote an article in the book called The Secret Life of Pronouns, which I'll show you in a moment. And this was published in The New Scientist in September 2011. Now, what he comes up with is every one of the top 20 words is a function word. The function words account for less than 0.1% of vocabulary, but make up more than half the words we use. English has about 450 function words, and when we speak, they account for about 55% of all the words we use. Now, this is huge. And then he puts it into perspective by saying the average English speaker has a vocabulary of about 100,000 words, 99. 9% of these are content words, that's to say that's lexical vocabulary, and these are less than half the words we use. So it's very clear that we absolutely need to learn the function words. 